Welcome back everybody to No Man's Sky. I am an old guy gaming and I hope you're having a great day. <laughs> so uh, what we're going to do today is we are going to set off and uh, focus on some exploration for a while. But before we do that, there's a couple things I want to uh, do. Um, first of all, I am going to go, I'm going to adjust a couple settings. Um, so let's go into, uh, actually let's go into general. Um, and I want to, I completely forgot that I have, um, I have the Horizons DLC that I got a long, long, long time ago. And it gives you um, the, what's it called? The vector ship or something like that, which I think looks really cool. Um, so, excuse me, I've got a, a whisker in my mouth or something. <laughs> uh, anyway, what we're going to do is. We're going to hop in the Radiant Pillar and make this our active ship. And I have uh, some stuff on here that I actually want to take off. Um, so let's uh, let's uninstall everything that can be uninstalled. Because this is, you know, this is my backup ship back in the days when I was still prone to getting blown up every now and then. Uh, which we're going to also talk about too in a second here. Um, okay, now let's just move this to the exosuit. And we'll also move this because the thing is, is when you get the DLC ship, which you're supposed to do at the beginning of the game, but I just completely forgot about it. Um, you replace it. You have to re replace this one, but you can't have both at the same time, which is fine because you know, Radiant Pillar, this, this is just the starter ship, not a big deal. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go into here we're going to go to general we're going to go down to um to, 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 to miscellaneous redeem bonus content and we're going to get the horizon omega ship which is called the prime vector I really like the way this ship looks we're going to go negotiate price and we have to exchange it for our current ship the radiant pillar okay so we're going to exchange that and boom look at that we have the prime vector now really like the ship i, I like the ship so much that i might even consider um, upgrading it to an S-Class ship eventually. Um, so right now it's still going to be our backup ship, but it does come with a phase beam too, which is kind of cool. Um, so now what we're going to do here is we're going to um, put the, the shield here. Because this is a backup kind of rescue ship, it's going to be more defensive than offensive, at least for, for starting out. Uh, so that's why I'm going to put the deflector shield in the, the turbo slot there. And then let's reinstall all of this stuff. And I even have a few things up in the storage that we could, you know, put in this ship too. Uh, but I'm not too, I don't want to get too much into the weeds in that right at the moment un until and unless we decide, you know, that we're going to, uh, to get this ship upgraded to an S-Class ship. Uh, so we'll just put that stuff there. And uh, what is this? Yeah, so the so the shielding in particular is what we're really going to beef up. Uh, so this is a, a, a very, you know, a nice defensive ship. One that we can just, you know, get away from the bad guys and that sort of thing. And um, let's put these supplies in here. Okay, so... Um, in fact, here, let's fuel that. Let's fuel that as much as we can. And the shields are already charged because that happens automatically. Um, now, we want to take and move this next to these guys so we get the bonus. Um, we'll just keep the rocket launcher and the phase beam up there for now. And if I move this, maneuverability is currently 463. If I move this over here, it's 431. If I move it here, it's 463 if I move it here it's 463 so yeah that's probably gonna be the best arrangement for those uh, damage potential is 190 if I move this over to here that doesn't make any difference so it doesn't look like it matters it might not even be factoring those in anyways uh, okay very cool so um, we now have the prime vector a possible with the possible goal of upgrading this eventually to an S class ship Later on. You know what? Let's take it out for a spin. We might as well at least do that though, right? It's not obviously not gonna be 
quite as responsive as um, as our uh, our sail ship. I can I can already tell it's not quite. It's not too bad though, actually. And then this is the, our first person view. I love it. Very cool. Uh, this is this is one of the ships that we would we would also put the. Um, the thruster recharger module on too, which I have at least two of those to spare. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change a couple of other settings, and I, I don't. It just never occurred to me to do this sooner, and I should have, but I didn't. So better late than never. Kind of the story of my life sometimes it seems. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go into difficulty. I'm going to make a couple things harder, and I'm going to make at least one thing easier. So everything on survival is already maxed out as quickly as it can, except for sta scanner recharge, um, which I don't really care about that, to be honest with you. Uh, well, no, actually, let's set that to hard, too. Let's just go, go big or go home. Uh, crafting and usage items. This is one thing I'm going to make simpler, because I'm just going to be honest with you. Having those small stack sizes and having massive inventory management pains in the ass is just not fun. Does it make the game more difficult? Yes, but not in a fun way. So I'm going to set that to easier standard, and that's going to increase our, our stack sizes for, you know, things like oxygen and ferrite tenfold. So instead of stacks 1,000, we can now have stacks of 10,000. Uh, so that's going to help tremendously, both in terms of, you know, space management inventory management, but also speeding up or, or decreasing the time that I have to spend trying to figure out where to put all this crap. Okay, so yeah, uh, everything else is on hard purchase. Purchases can be expensive. Let's, tur let's turn that on just because we have so much money, we might as well, you know, make it as challenging as possible as far as that goes. And then the other thing we're going to increase is this, and I, I would have done this a long time ago. I just, like I said, I never thought about it because I'll be honest with you, the combat in this game is a joke. Um, and that's, a, well... That sounded negative. That's not what I mean. No Man's Sky is not intended to be a combat simulator. Combat is just one of several things that you do in the game. Um, so I'm not knocking the game for that. I'm just saying that the standard combat is, especially now, is just, it's so easy, it's pathetic. It's boring. And so we're going to increase that to challenging. Now, I did this on a test save just to test it out, and it does make it harder. It's still not impossibly hard. Um, I took on I, I took on the Sentinels. Um, for probably at a good solid 10 minutes of combat and I had to be on my toes uh, I had to you know be I had to charge my shield a lot more frequently and and it was it definitely more difficult but it was still not not impossibly hard so we're so we're bumping that up and making that harder so combat's a little more fun and then as far as the rest of this stuff goes I mean reputation and standing gain that's something that I probably would have set to challenging eventually but because we you know that ship has already sailed so to speak we're gonna just keep that the way that it is um, okay at some point I'll probably do a permadeath ultra hardcore series where we just have everything except for stack sizes <laughs> um, set to as hard as it can be and it almost really is here too with one or two exceptions okay let's apply these difficulty changes it says it, it screws up some of our achievements. I don't really give a shit about that, to be honest with you. And uh, there we go. Okay, so now we have changed our game. We've made stack sizes and inventory management easier, and several other things, including combat, more difficult. And we got the prime vector ship, which is cool. All right, you guys. That means I think we are ready to go. Um, so we can warp anywhere we want to in our freighter now because we have all three of the, the drives. I've completely charged the freighter hyperdrive and we can go 899 light years uh, with our current setup we will eventually like i've mentioned to you uh, we will eventually get the um the other two warp drive extender distance extenders too but for now um 900 light years is still is still pretty good and the goal here is to explore while we move towards the center of the galaxy let's do it um wait a second Hold on. I forgot one thing. I forgot to... I forgot to do the frigates. So let's get the frigates taken care of first. Um... Well, you know what? Never mind. Nope, let's just do it. I, I'll wait until all of the frigates are back, and then we'll reset them all at once. 
It's not it's not like we're hurting for money, so they can just wait. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to use the filter. I would like to go to the Atlas station and I'd like to go to the, to a black hole and both both of them are are almost right next to each other. So let's go visit Atlas first as part of our just exploration um, plans here. And Atlas is right there. Okay. Um, no, he's right here. I wonder why it's sending me to that star system. I don't know, but this is the one we actually want to go to. Uh, make sure we're not selecting something else behind it. Yeah, this one. Okay, let's do it. Off we go. I'm excited because today is March the 11th. It's Saturday, and later on this afternoon, of course, by the time you guys see this, it'll be in the past, but later on this afternoon, we're going to start a new multiplayer No Man's Sky series uh, with some of you guys who are members of the channel. And I'm uh, looking forward to doing that. We have a couple of things that we need to work out in terms of what our goals and stuff will be, but um, that ought to be fun. So I'm not really going to talk about what those goals are yet because we haven't fully agreed upon what they will be. But once, you know, once we do know them, then we will, you know, then, then you'll know about it too. And, you know, whenever I do live streams, I typically, you know, when I'm on a normal schedule, which lately hasn't been much, very often, I typically try to stream on Wednesday evenings and Saturday afternoons. And all of the uh, VODs are always on my channel in the live stream section for anybody who might be interested in watching that. Uh, okay, so let's go. Let's jump in a starship and go visit Alice. And we will keep our eyes open for for new ships. I'd like to get an S-Class hauler and probably an S-Class explorer and probably an S-Class exotic. I mean, we might as well. Um... That's why we're building our, our bank up here. But those are all C-class. Well, that's one of the reasons why we're building up our bank. Off we go. There's Atlas right over there. You know, before we go see Atlas, let's just do the usual stuff at the at a new station. Uh, get an exosuit upgrade, check the mobile tool. Um, all right, yeah, let's just, we're going to, I already mentioned this to you guys, but I'm going to completely fill out my tech before I worry about my cargo space. So now we are up to 207,000, not a problem at all. Let's just take a quick look at any S-Class modules that these guys might have. Uh, we can't, we don't need movement, toxic, or shield. So I think we're good to go there. We'll check the spaceship. Now, you know what I need to actually do, though, so I need to go through what I currently have um, and and get the pulse engine. Yeah, we could put this on the prime vector, so let's grab that. Uh, anyways, get the prime vector as kitted out as we can with what I have for spares before I continue buying a whole lot more. Not that it matters because we have so many nanites. <laughs> we'll probably never run out again. Well, we could. Uh, actually, if we're going to upgrade the ships, we probably will run out. Um, what do you got? Plasma launcher module. Um, I think I'm already maxed out on that. Money beam and scatter blaster. I think I'm probably maxed out on those two. So I'm really just... I mean, actually... Why? Okay, hold on a second. This should... Let's put that there for a moment. No play tool. No, that's not what I want to do. Let's move the... If I move this... Post-impact ignition... Let's move that there. Yeah, I should be putting that there because now it's also benefiting from this. Uh, this does not... This doesn't count towards bonuses, so that can go off by itself. Alright, and then if we go to Exosuit here... Uh, 
Okay, so we yeah we are maxed out on um, on the pulse spitter modules. However, that's really not that good of a pulse spitter module. Now that I'm looking at it. So we should still be on the lookout for an S-Class Pulse Spitter from the stations. I don't think... Did he have one of those? No, he had a Plasma Launcher. Mighty Beam and a Scatter Blaster. Okay. Um, if we go back to here, Multi-Tool. Yeah, we're maxed out on the Plasma Launcher ones, too. Okay, let's check this. Trace of Lightning, it's called. It's B-Class, not interested. I'm not even going to look at multi-tools unless they're S-Class. Just because ours is so good right now. In fact, can we even... Can you upgrade multi-tools to S? Let's look at that really quick. I don't think you can, but maybe you can. I haven't really paid attention to that. Yes, we can upgrade. Oh, that's expensive. Lord almighty. Hmm... It really costs 199 million to purchase one slot? Oh my goodness, who would ever do that? Unless <laughs> you had billions and billions. Okay, so that's something I might consider. And you know, the reason why is because our multi-tool is, you know, I mean, it's already got a lot of slots. Well, it's, it's about halfway, just a tiny bit over halfway there. Um, it's, I don't know. I'll think about it. It, it. It's nice to know that there's an option for that now. I just, like I said, I hadn't really considered it. But I still think I'd like to find something that's a cool, little bit cooler looking in S-Class from the get-go. Okay. Now let's head to Atlas. Let's see what Atlas has to say. We've met him once during the storyline, but we haven't just randomly gone to say hi. So supposedly, from what we've learned so far, Atlas is supposed to be a god and is supposed to have created all of these galaxies. But that's not crystal clear. There might be more to it than that, or less to it than that, for that matter. Let's go talk to him and see. Oh shit. Okay. Hey, we learned a new word. Those don't seem to do anything else. That didn't do anything. There we go. Atlas worked for you. Some warp cells, I think. Yep. Alright, let's talk to him. You! The infinite, the robot, robot, hate duck plan. <laughs> okay. Woe for Ku traveler. The Atlas called me to this interface, and yet its purpose remains unclear. It demands worship. It demands obedience. It welcomes me. It knows what I am. It offers the gift of true understanding. But why? Why does such power and knowledge crave submission? It knows my thoughts before I know them myself. It knows what I will do. The Atlas asked me to follow its path. Uh, except milestone pathfinder or above. Except milestone pathfinder or above. Oh, I guess I have to have reached that. I mean, yeah. We can we can do this. I will accept this. The sky is deep and full of wonders, and the path to enlightenment enlightenment opens to me. So I'm assuming captured nano atlas seed containing zonally shifted quasi stellar substrate. Warning: Do not allow matrix to commune with this dimensional space. Okay. Um. I'm assuming I can do both 
the uh, the the main storyline or what was what, what 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 is it called now? Yeah, the main storyline here in the Atlas Path. Um, if it's if it becomes a situation where you can't fully do both in one playthrough, then maybe when we do our permadeath playthrough, we'll do the Atlas path instead of the other mission. I don't know. We'll see. It's crazy looking in here, man. Next, we're going to go to a black hole. I think we'll just warp there in our starship, and then we can call uh, our freighter to us. And it's very close by. Oh, you know what we should do, though? Actually, let's go back to our freighter for the, a moment and scan this system so we can get some nanites. Uh, okay, where is me freighter? Where is me freighter? It should be over here by the... There's really two things I'm looking for when scanning a system, a new system, you know, getting the the credit for it and the nanites and whatnot, but also looking for potential um, permanent base planets, aka, you know, tr temperate, tropical, bountiful, etc. types of planets that have ideal conditions and that, that we like. Okay, so let's upload this. That gives us 40 nanites. That's an abandoned planet, a forsaken planet, a barren planet, an overgrown planet, a, mia a miasmatic planet, and a supercritical planet. Overgrown planet. Um, blistering floods. That Oh, and that's the third thing. Once we do find a, a potential candidate, we want to look at the weather, too, because I don't want to live in a place that's got nasty storms all the time. That's why I play Icarus. Okay, anyway, um... Ample and abundant. Blistering floods doesn't sound like fun. I suppose... Oh, somebody else has already discovered this, too. I've seen this Satoru guy, person, individual, discoveries before because... Obviously, they worked in this area uh, around two years ago too. In fact, I even—I I, I, don't—I think I told you guys this. I actually found another player's base, which is—I mean, as time goes on, that's going to become more and more likely. But it's still kind of neat because you still got to remember how big this game is and how unlikely it is that you run into somebody. So I found another player's base. It was—it was a farm. It was a—I think it was a gas farm. I stopped and just took a quick look at it. I didn't screw with anything, of course, but. I mean, um, it was just kind of neat, though, to, to actually see that. The player who left it there, I mean, he could, he or she, you know, could have been, you know, could have quit the game like years ago, too. It's just, you never really know. Uh, anyway, okay. Um, what are we doing? Oh, we're gonna, we're going to, we're gonna go through the black hole. do it. I suppose we could have just warped in the freighter, but six and one half does the other. Maybe. I don't know. You'd think warping with the freighter is more expensive on fuel, but maybe it doesn't matter. Uh, okay, so now let's, um, uh, let's change the filter. To black, whoop, black hole. Okay. Why isn't it? Oh, why is it on free explorer? There we go, black hole. I thought there was a black hole close by here. There is. It's right there. What? In fact, it's just the next star system over. Look at that. Okay, let's do it. Uh, 
Lanisa system, discovered by Meridrin98, so we're not the first, unfortunately. Eh, that's alright. Black hole discovered. Look at that thing. Um, are there any other planets or anything in it? Yeah, there are. In the black hole system. Oh, this is an outlaw system. Ooh. Who owns it? It's Corvax. Alright, let's go to the station and do the usual. In fact, we need to call our freighter in here and, and scan the place. There's some victims. We could uh, attack those guys if we wanted to. Oh, well, now we can't call our ship in because they're in close proximity. There we go. Okay, let's upload. This is a high energy planet, a hazy planet, a desolate planet, a rotting planet, a noxious planet, and a torrid planet. Excuse me. Okay. Not interested in any of those. You know what? I'm thinking maybe we should possibly move our scanner room closer to the front because I have a feeling we're going to be using it a lot. Um, if I did that, though, where would I put it? We use the teleporter a lot. We use the terminal a lot. Is it possible to go that direction? Let's find out. No, we can't. Oh, we can go that direction though. Um. All right, we we don't use. Well, no, we can't. It's red. Why is it red? Targeted. Yeah, it's outside of build limits. Never mind. Okay, we can't go that way. I'd have to rearrange the storage setup. I think. If we want to get it, if we want to keep this towards the front. The other thing we could do is we could move this freighter command station down this. Yeah, you know what? That's what we're going to do. That'll work. Alright, so let's do this. Hopefully we can move it while it's doing its thing there. Um, yeah, that way. There we go. Okay. Now, let's take the scanner room right here. And I want this to go here. I like it. I like it, I like it. Okay, so that puts it closer to the front. And actually, too, um, yeah, that's good enough. That'll work. I was thinking maybe even put the scanner here because we'll, but it's close enough. It's not that big a deal. Uh, oh, let's check this. Look at that. It's getting stuff. Okay. Oh, you know what? We forgot to, we forgot to look at the changes to our storage. I'm not going to spend more than just a couple seconds, but I'm just going to show you that. Now, instead of having to deal with 1,000 per stack, we can go up to 10,000. That's going to be huge, huge, huge in inventory management, both in terms of space and just, you know, me being able to more quickly do all this stuff and not have to spend five minutes trying to figure out where everything goes. So I'll do all that off camera, though. Um, but it's nice that uh, we have that option now. Okay. After moving that, that kind of left us... Oh, it just left the hole right here. But I'll... I'll worry about that later. I, I don't want to spend more time on this now. But uh, what are we doing? Uh, we're going to go through the black hole. Okay. Um, no, I don't think we can drive the freighter through the black hole. We're going to have to fly through it with, a, with our ship. 
Um, and we also want to stop at the station. That looks like an Earth, Earth type planet, but no, it's a radiated planet. No, thank you. Okay, let's go get our suit upgrade. Check the multi tool, and then we'll take off to the black hole. Tech slot. Okay. Kiss of Silence. Class C. It's got horns on it, too. It'd be kind of cool to live in a system with a black hole so you can just see it up in the sky. Uh, where is it? It doesn't show up on the... Oh, there it is. Okay, here we go. Extreme gravitational interference. Where will this black hole take us? Ooh, pretty lights. All right, first contact. We're in the NASA Nazi Ferb Seven system. Black hole warp successful. Distance traveled six hundred and seventeen. Thousand light years. Wow. That's still mind boggling when you think about it. Just the how vast that distance is. Um, all right, let's call our freighter here. And uh, first thing we're going to do is do our, our system scan, see what we got here, and also see how close we are to. Uh, if we moved towards the center of the galaxy or away from it. Let's check that first. Oh, wow, look at that. Okay, so if you look at the galactic map in the upper left-hand corner, we were in the southwest, excuse me, uh, the southwest part, portion, quadrant, whatever, of the galaxy. Now we're in the western portion and probably a little further out than we originally were, too. Oh, interesting. Okay, so this is a Viking system. It is a two star. Let's um let's scan it. Six planets, sub zero, barren, empty, barren, chemo, which I take that to mean cold because it has frost ca a crystal and super critical. Okay. Upload all 75 nanites. Uh, yep, none of those look like places I would want to want to live. So there you go. All right. Well, since that black hole did not bring us closer to the center of the galaxy, I think we're going to head back. But before we do, um, let's go to the space station. I think, I think we have to actually go there first before it registers on the terminus. Or maybe it doesn't because we just scanned the system. No, I think it would I think it would show up here if so yeah, we gotta fly over there. That's fine. We can do that. And I might even Set down a base computer on one of these planets just so we can get, if we ever wanted to go into the extreme western part of the galaxy, we could get here. I know we could also teleport to the space station, but I don't know if I'd ever be able to remember without writing something down in actuality, which I'm too lazy to do. Um, what is this? This is Viking. Yeah, so we're going to be able to get... Nanites from the back room. Uh, we'll keep our eyes peeled for an explorer so that we can, uh, or a traveler, I'm sorry, uh, so that we can get another cliff.
Okay. Um, we're not really looking for suit modules at the moment. I will take a look at you because... Wait, do we need any ship modules at the moment? Infranite. This could be better than what we have, but if it isn't, we lose a thousand nanites. Yeah, no, let's not do that right now. Uh, but I do want to look at this. That's a B-Class Legacy of the Horizon. Kind of cool looking, but nah. And we're looking for an S-Class Pulse Spitter upgrade. Geology and mining beam. Nope. Okay. Fair enough. Let's go into this room, get nanites, look for a traveler. All right. So, yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, we're going to touch down on one of these planets. It doesn't really matter which one. And just set up a base computer really quick. And we're going to name it Western Galaxy. So that way we can come back here without me having to try and guess which space station that we were at. If we ever want to. And um, explore more of the western part of the galaxy. Chill out. Okay, we are going to rename this Western Galaxy. There we go. Not saying we ever will come back here, but now we have the option should we uh, choose to do so. Okay, we can do one of two things. We can either warp back to where we were, the area we were, we've were we been in, or we could bring the anomaly here and uh, ask Polo for another black hole. Why don't we try that first? It could take us even further away from the center, or it could take us a lot closer. Let's do a save. Yeah, let's do that. See if Helios has uh, some nanites for us. Look at that, 1125 nanites. Now we'll try Ares. 150. Okay. Um, ask for black bull coordinates. Oh, smiles and sends the location of black hole starships navigation computer. Woohoo! Okay. All right, so it's just one system over. Let's head over there. We'll go through it, and we'll see if it gets closer or further away from the center of the galaxy. Marima third three system. We are first contact. Beautiful. It's a dangerous system. Corvax. Let's head through this black hole and see where it takes us. Might as well stop off at the station and do the usual. This is very, very similar to what we already have, both in terms of looks. The colors are a little bit different, but otherwise, it's 30 slots. Yeah, it's just one slot less than what we already have, but not better. Let's talk to this guy. Approach the lost traveler's skin is translucent as if they were not truly there. I need plutonium, please. Stranded in somewhere. All chance of rescue lost traveler, you are my only hope. 
Get plutonium substitute. 75 condensed carbon. Uh, 75 condensed carbon. Okay, hold on. We can do this. We go to the freighter and we go to uh, basic resources and grab... Uh, we'll just grab all of this. I have no plutonium, but the traveler seems content to receive condensed carbon. Grateful for my assistance in fueling their ship, they give me nanites in return. I may have saved their life. How many nanites did you give me? Okay. Not enough, because I have to give you more than that back to get your grave marker. Um, ask where they came from. There we go. Okay, so we got a new grave marker. A new glyph. Something following Kazit. Turn, it's not there. These caves. I am Kazit. Exosuit tells me to abandon. Kazit must disable it. I do not plan to survive. Did not take off or decided to Kazit. Anger the universe, I know, but I must. The fallen traveler's gaze is marked by a glyph. An epitaph of yada yada yada. And we now know seven glyphs. Seven of sixteen, and we got ourselves a memory fragment. Fan friggin' tastic. Uh, what is in the memory fragment? A scanner module. Is that better than the one we currently have? Let's temporarily move that. This one here. It does... No, it is not. So we will melt it for the parts. Put that back there. And it said something about this being a near-perfect planet. I just saw that pop up on the screen, so... We might need to investigate that. Depends on what they mean by near perfect. I don't mind the blue theme. Blue is my favorite color. There's something over here that's... Oh, here we go. I don't know. I think that's gonna... Yeah, there we go. And then... Okay, any more red dots immediately available? Let's see what it has to say about this planet. It's got mild weather. Uh, ooh. It's got poop deposits, which would be really good for farming. I mean, I don't know how much of this we need. Sentinels are intermittent. Um, this is a misty planet. Well, I'll put it this way, because it has facium, if nothing else, this could be a really good place to have a, set up a big farm. Um, so based upon that information, I think what I'm going to do is put a base computer down here. We'll even put it down by the unknown grave. And what we're going to do is we're going to name this we'll call it potential farm farm planet there we go so this is a viridescent planet occasional scalding cloud bursts Okay, um, this is a Forsaken planet, and this is the one that we were just on with mild, damp weather. Cool. Uh, Alright, let's uh, upload this, get some nanites, and we are ready to head through the black hole. Alright, here we go. Where it takes us. Nobody knows. We shall find out soon.
First Condax, the Ribsy system. All right, guys. We are going to wrap up the episode, this episode. We'll take a quick look and see where we are in relation to the center of the galaxy first before I let you go. Ah, look at that. Okay. So we are now in the north by north east portion of the map and quite a bit closer to the center. Very cool. All right, I think we're going to stay here and start moving. Well, no, we might keep we might keep farming black holes, but we're definitely going to keep this place marked because it's the closest we've been and if, you know, after we might try a couple more black holes, and if we don't find anything um, that gets even closer, then we'll we'll come back here, and then we'll just start manually moving towards the center from here. All right, you guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment and share out the video, and we will catch you in the very next episode. See ya!